YouTube, we're talking about the midterms today. There's a lot of things going on. We got uh, some shenanigans at the ballot box, like always now, ever since uh, we adopted that universal mail-in voting in certain states. We have a Republican civil war that's underway. We got Trump at DeSantis' neck. You got people saying uh, Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy are all traitors to the cause. They're rhinos that they underfunded their... Uh, their MAGA counterparts. There's a whole lot of shit going on right now. So we're going to jump into it. Phil, how's it going? How's it going down there in Texas? It's good. It's, it stayed red, apparently. It stayed red. All I know is that it sounds really interesting. It's, it, uh, you brought up like the, um, the budgeting. Uh, so for my end, I found that interesting. Apparently, this is like the most money spent in any uh, midterm election in history. Uh, they spent around uh, seventeen billion dollars, almost. Uh, that's what it was estimated. Um, that's insane. Because right now uh, you have two parties that are saying everything's up for grabs. It's dire. You know, you got to get to the polls. And there's a lot of money being uh, dumped into these campaigns. Did you see that? Uh, before we really get into the election stuff, let's say who, because we want to talk about the money, who's funding it. Did you see that? Uh, that was it. That Bitcoin billionaire, the one who just like. Uh, he's in the news right now. Oh, the guy from FTX, or I, I think uh, w one of those companies that he he yeah. he put like one million of his dollars or something like that. He donated it was more than that. I believe it's oh, more into. Yeah, maybe it was a billion. Who knows? I don't know. I know yeah. it was an ex a crazy amount. And it came out that he funded uh, the Democrat, like a uh, heavily funded the Democrat uh, side of it, and then his partner uh, funded the Republican side. Yeah. This well, is lobbying. I mean, that, yeah, it's lobbying. Big money is it's nothing new. I mean, you had the uh, the presidential election where Zuckerberg poured in, what was it, $100 million down in Florida trying to flip Florida. You had what? Mike Bloomberg. Bloomberg, once he dropped out of the race, he was funneling millions of dollars through races all around the country. I mean, big money is nothing new. That's interesting because I wonder why Mark Zuckerberg, of all places, why Florida? Because the only thing that I know that Florida might be advantageous to him is, one, the tax benefits. Two, it's being called or being, uh, uh, being converted into the crypto Wall Street. Crypto Miami is becoming the crypto Wall Street. They even have the digital bull down there. And I know that he's big on the metaverse. I know that he's big on, he tried to do the Libra coin. Apparently the FCC didn't really like that. Um, so I think that got stopped in, uh, in its tracks. Um, also, they're very big into the, the, the blockchain and the, the Web 3.0 space. So it's interesting that he wants Florida. He He's interacting with Florida. Like, for what? What's the end goal, right? Like, why Why does it have to be blue for him to take advantage of these things? Or is he trying to take out the competition that's establishing down there because of all the benefits? And now he wants it to switch blue. So now all the crypto investors and, and the people in that space, they all get fucked over. And I don't know. What do you think? Well, Florida's always been an important uh, state, especially since I'll say 2000 uh, with that whole uh, uh, crazy Bush election where it was, oh. I think, uh, do you remember that? Yeah, that I was remember the that, dude. 2000. Yeah, dude, wasn't that Gore against Bush? Bush v. Gore, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Bush v. Gore. It yeah. was, yeah, it came down to that state or whatever, and it was a tight one. And and it, it, went, it went to the courts. It was pretty controversial. Yeah. So it was, Florida's always been that, like that state, it's a, I forget how many exact, like it's a big state, it's got a lot of electoral votes because the population. Yeah. And again, it's a lot of revenue too. It's a big tourist destination. Florida's got money. Florida is pretty affluent, you know, it's, you get all the old money going down there from New York. I mean, look at Trump when it's winter in New York, he's down in Mar-a-Lago, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's the playground for the Northerners. That's exactly what Florida is. Florida is. It's a lot, you know. It's it's a lot of money down there. It's a lot of money. But for this election, what it what it was, uh, Florida went totally red. Uh, we had uh, DeSantis down there. I believe he won by almost twenty points. That's insane. 
considering his first election uh, against was it uh, Andrew Gillum. He was a far left progressive black guy from uh, I think it was the Tampa area. He mm-hmm. had all you know the, all checked all the boxes for the Democrat Party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a close election. I think DeSantis won by maybe two points. Okay. Yeah, two points in that one, and this one to win by 20, especially in such a polarized time with uh, all these crazy issues going on right now, whether it be gun rights, free speech, abortion rights. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, but... The Cubans, the Cuban vote in uh, Florida, the Hispanic, you know, you and I know a few Cubans, and a lot of them are pretty conservative. For sure. Yeah, a lot of people from Spanish uh, speaking countries are conservative, especially because they've seen what happens with socialism uh, when it goes extreme, right? Especially the Cubans, right? Communists. So yeah. they, they're, they're afraid of government. I mean, there's a big Venezuelan uh, community down in Florida, too. And yeah, they don't like the big government hand. at all. Big government is, is, is the enemy for them. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But yeah, this midterms is crazy, man. I, uh, overall, they were saying the. I mean, all the polls going into the election were saying the Republicans were going to sweep it. There was going to be a red wave, a bloodbath. They were supposed to pick up 30, 40 House seats, maybe uh, two to four in the Senate. I never thought that. I never thought they would get 30 to 40 House seats, even with uh, redistrict, redistricting, which went on this year. A lot of, you know, gerrymandering's big. Democrats do it. Republicans do it. Every, you know, I was like, yeah, maybe with the redistricting going on, maybe we could get 20 House seats. But it's too, like, there's too many hot button issues going on during this election cycle. The abortion one, I think, is the biggest. I think that's what uh, kneecapped the Republicans in this election. Especially when you, uh, you looked out who came out to vote. Gen Z. Gen Z went totally blue. They went totally blue. And I think the abortion right was the biggest one because, you know, these college kids are all getting fired up. They're hearing like, oh, the Republicans want to take away abortion. What college kid wants to hear that? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, what you're like, I, I, don't want a, I don't want a kid freaking uh, at the end of the semester. You know, I don't want to find out this girl's pregnant. And then you had all that uh, hyperbolic stuff that was, uh, oh, Republicans are going to take away contraceptives. They want to take away uh, the morning after pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's interesting about that? Um, so uh, there's an article that, that I pulled up, um, which is that Democrats are actually posting a lot more on TikTok than the Republicans, uh, even for the Senate, which was odd because now it's become the FCC recently came out. The commissioner came out uh you know, asking the government to really ban them. And it's funny that with midterm elections here, we're talking about all the money that's in it and they're pumping uh, information through TikTok. You're saying that the Gen Z voters are getting this information about abortion and all that stuff. And it ties, and then they're using TikTok to educate this, this class. So Republicans right there, that could be one of the reasons why the vote didn't go the, the Republican way, right? Because they're still exactly stuck in like this old school mindset of, you know, how to target their voters. And they need oh, to... Oh, no, re- no, they're not stuck. The, the whole controversy with TikTok is, I mean, Biden had a bunch of TikTok influencers at the White House recently. Republicans get banned yes. off of TikTok. They're not allowed on TikTok. For any of these views, you could say, uh, what is a girl, you know, if the correct... It's a, you know... Hold on. What do you what, what? Okay. So what? What do you have to back up that claim though? Because I never heard of the, and I would love I mean, to to, that, to get this information about Republicans or right winged uh, conservative ideologists. Oh, it, it's out there. Uh, there's a, a bunch of uh, influencers. Uh, uh, right. I would say right wings. You know, center center right influencers. Sticks Hexenhammer. Uh, he's banned from TikTok. Uh, Sleazy P Martin. No, he's still on there. No, I think he got banned. You can't go on TikTok. Republicans get banned from TikTok. Uh, Interesting. Was banned. Uh, Nick Fuentes, he was banned. I mean, that's why one wow. of the reasons why Elon bought Twitter is because it was all swayed one way. It was all swayed to the left. Like, you can't say certain words. Groomer, that became something like you get banned for. It, it, all, it was all swaying to, to the left wing. Facebook, 
all these tech companies were censoring uh, the Hunter Biden story when uh, it was coming out before the presidential presidential election. No way. Zuckerberg went on Rogan and even said they suppressed the story because they thought it was Russian Russian misinformation. It's all bullshit. You, tech companies are all these Silicon Valley super left woke people and they're pushing their agenda and that's why conservatives get kicked off all these platforms like facebook uh instagram you name it they are either shadow banned or they just get outright banned all right cool i got some stats that i just pulled up here actually so um senate candidates with tiktok accounts candidates with accounts overall 20 out of 68 uh, so that's around 30% have on the accounts with TikTok. Side? I'm going to break that down now. So so now for the Senate, to break that number down is from the Democratic side. So Democratic candidates with accounts, 16 out of 34, nearly half. And this is in the Senate. And then for the Republican side, 4 out of 34. So 11.76% of Republicans have TikTok accounts. Um, I don't know about, you know, bans or anything like that. I don't know. So, but I'm assuming these yeah. are active accounts, right? Now we're going to go into the House of Representative candidates, right? So from the Democratic candidates, 112 out of 402 have accounts. Uh, and then for the Republican side, it's uh, 43 out of 397. So only 10%. So literally for the House and Senate, nearly, they're only like at 11% uh of them are on TikTok, and which is which is insane. And then we could get into the governors. So Democratic governors with accounts on TikTok, twenty one out of thirty seven from the Democratic Party, and nine out of thirty seven from the Republican Party. Uh, we could do Secretary of State, and yeah. So pretty much, it's a Democratic platform. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I mean, like I said, Biden. Uh, he had. TikTok influencers at the White House recently. So, I mean, in the Republicans, wow. you can't, it's not, I mean, think about it. these kids who are 20 something, they don't know anything about being conservative or the modern Republican Party. They hear uh, what they're hearing from on TikTok Republicans are racist, Republicans hate the gays, Republican, they're hearing all this crazy hyperbox stuff. Like uh, you said, you were hearing down in Texas, Greg Abbott's okay with school shootings. Yeah, because of the so, Evaldi thing that's polarizing, but he still won apparently. So, yeah, yeah, because full funding. You, you, because Texas is still a conservative state, you got a lot of conservative, even Latinos. I, I believe uh, Latinos became the biggest demographic in Texas. I might be mistaken. They just overcame the white population. So I mean, but that's the thing down there. The Latinos like. They are conservative. You have families that have been there for since before it was even a part of the United States. Yeah, the whole thing that scares me about both Florida and Texas is that we had this wave of uh, people leaving their states, their their blue states, right? So like people from New York, New Jersey, uh, from California, they all started flooding Florida and they all started flooding to Texas. I think the more and more that they start coming uh from these other regions and they start coming to texas and florida they're gonna start trying to mess with the whole balance of the red and blue in the future that i think is going to be exciting in the future but uh but yeah it's interesting how we were able to tie I believe in it's like the contrary to that i believe it's the contrary i don't think it's uh the people fleeing california and new york and new jersey i don't believe it's uh do you think they're the, conservative and they're looking I for believe it's safe the conservatives haven. i believe okay. it's the conservatives because um I even seen it from myself uh, at my job. We had some guys who were working in the city yeah. during, during uh, the pandemic and everything. Everything went to shit. They could. Yeah, they were yeah, still yeah, in the lockdown. Yeah, yeah. They're hundred thousand dollar apartments. They're, they're like, fuck it. I'm moving to Jersey. I'm not dealing with this shit. I mean, Jer like Jersey's conservative compared to New York City. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the violence that was happening during the pandemic too. Like people, which is still just... going on. It's still yeah. going on in New York City. It's crazy. Yeah. There's no policing because of everything that happened, you know, Black Lives Matter and everything like that. Nobody likes police. So they're just like, I'm not going to do my job anymore. You guys are threatening I wouldn't. to defund us. All right. So we're just not going to do anything. Yeah. I mean, that's why uh, this, uh, let's talk about the midterm election. New York City, 
uh, I believe it's Bensonhurst, uh, maybe Bay Ridge, which has a large Asian community. Mm-hmm. They they swung for the Republicans. They uh, kept the was it at least Stefanik's uh, seat out there. She's a congresswoman for Staten Island. She okay. blew out the Democratic uh, challenger, uh, Max Rose. Wow. Yeah, she blew him out. This is the second time she beat him, and he was uh, he was the incumbent before she beat him the last go around. And this time uh, she won by a few more percentage points. You have uh, districts in uh, the suburbs of New York that flipped, that flipped red. So like, that's what I, what pisses me off about all these uh, conservatives or whatever Republicans online. I consider myself a moderate, but I sway more to the conservative uh, tent, especially now with all the woke identity politics and all that shit from the left. Like you, you see all these. Uh, like little places in Jersey, we flipped the district. Tom Keene won, uh, he flipped the seventh district. You're seeing conservatives make ways, make gains. A win's a win. I, whether it, like, was it, I'll steal it from Vin Diesel. A win's a win, whether it's by an inch or a mile, right? Yeah, yeah. As long as you take the house, even if it's by a seat or two, as long as you can stop Biden's agenda from him pushing all these crazy bills through Congress, because Congress controls the purse strings so any bill that has to get passed let's say they uh if it originates in congress they got to send it to the senate and you know they keep on sending back and forth so if republicans have that power to like you know pretty much kill bills that's a power i want especially with biden with all the crazy shit he's trying to push through whether it be student loan forgiveness uh race-based aid for uh, restaurant workers or farm race-based farm workers aid, uh, aid like that's racist, you know? <laughs> like, I don't want policy like that. I want policy to be down. It just creates more issues because then yeah. it comes to animosity from another group and everybody could be in a group. You could categorize everybody into a fucking group, you know what I mean? So, you know, that, that identity politics is horrible and it just leads no to good. disasters. Especially- like my family, we're an interracial family. My wife doesn't like it. She thinks it's horrible. It, it, it all it does is just stir tension. You know, it's like we we made a lot of progress with you know from the '60s on out. You know, we made a lot of progress. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that. And you're never gonna have a hundred percent total equal, equal. I mean, you have equality. Not everything's going to be equal, you know? There's going to be disparities, no. whether... There should you know, be equal access to opportunities, but equality should not be enforced. You know, you shouldn't say, okay, now nurses, nurses have to be 50% women and half of it needs to get fired then. So that way they we can fill a void with 50% men. Or, you know, now that makeup needs to... Because now you have gender, that could be, or sex, or whatever you want to classify it as, and then you could break it down to another subgroup. Now it has to be: Are you a Latino? Or are you uh, are you black? Or are you uh, Asian? Or are you Pacific Islander? Like, it, you could just do subgroups all day. You know what I mean? And there's not going to be equality if you do it that way. Um, so yeah, so because like in the women portion, there's white women, there's black women, there's Latin women. You know what I mean? Like, what what's going to happen then? So, and they're all different from one another. I hate the whole lumping of everybody together, like uh, PO. Like I said before, like POCs and uh, was it uh, the Pacific Islander? Black. You know, it's like all these crazy acronyms for race and everything. But none of them ever like include white people, which is funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like different what the hell? Like, why is they have Eastern European, Western European. They should have all that stuff then. Like, if you talk about this uh, race bullshit to, like, Europeans, they're like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, because, you know, they still go by their national, you know, identity. Like, I'm English, I'm Italian, you know, and they all hate one another. So it's like, yeah, it's funny. They have, they, yeah, they don't, uh, they don't pick on just one group. They hate everybody. Oh, so speaking about, like we were saying about uh, these politics based on uh, gender or race, uh, mm-hmm. California, about a couple months ago, they had, they tried to p- push this bill uh through the the state, but somebody sued, and I think the Supreme Court found it unconstitutional, where they had to have equal number of men and women on the boards of all these companies. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yeah, that was going to be, and they were, I think they was even going to go as extreme as uh, delisting them from the stock exchange uh, yep. if they yep. didn't comply. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's interesting. Yeah. So that that's one of the things they try to pull. Uh, a bunch of things they try to pull, like these sleazy little freaking divisive race-based gender policy. It just doesn't work. It just does not work. I mean, look at the White House. What did Joe Biden say uh, right from the beginning? I'm going to have a black female VP. Now we got one of the worst VPs in history, Camilla Harris. You don't see this bitch anywhere. She doesn't do a <laughs> goddamn thing. They call her the borders are, but we have fucking uh, Mexicans pop flooding over the border like crazy. And it's not just Dude, Cat like, Williams. at the border. Like, you're yeah, useless, bitch. Yeah, Cat Williams has a joke. He's like, you know we got a black vice president because you can't find her nowhere working. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. That's Cat Williams, people. That's not me. Get us kicked off YouTube or something. I'm just quoting. Because even though you're Hispanic, uh, you're still... I'm not Hispanic. I'm, I'm not sorry. Hispanic. I'm not from Hispaniola. I'm Latin, if anything. But I'm Caribbean. You know what I mean? But to you... But to them, you're you're Latinx, okay? You're all t- the same. All right, so where the hell are we at now with the, the midterms almost in the bag? Where are we going with this uh, Republican Civil War? You have Trump and DeSantis at each other. Well, DeSantis isn't doing anything. Trump is just fucking going ballistic like always. So currently where we're standing with the midterms, we, uh, Mark Kelly just uh, won, won back his Senate seat in Arizona, which I'm okay with because he's a moderate Democrat. He's come out a few times against Biden especially with the whole uh, crisis at the border. He's came, come out plenty of times. Him and uh, Henry Co- uh, Collier, I believe, he's down there in uh, South Texas. He's okay. another Democrat that you know, sh- splits from the party on, for, on certain issues, which I appreciate, like a Joe Manchin. You know, I like those moderate guys. So uh, Mark Kelly's holding on. We got Carrie Lake. Right now, that one's... Uh, Got Katie Hobbs. She's pulling away. She she's still up by I think it was like twenty thousand votes. So I don't know how that's going to go, but that's going to go to the courts. You're going to see recounts across the state for that. That's a hi- highly contested uh, governorship. What state is that that you were talking about right now? That Kelly Arizona. Okay, Arizona. Arizona. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it looks like that race is starting to narrow down. So they gave him the win. Democrats also picked up a house seat in Arizona. Now, Nevada, we got Laxalt. He only has about an 800 uh, vote lead over, uh, what's it, Cortez Mastro. So that that's another one where Republicans need to pick this up. If they get that, they get the 50-50 Senate, and then it goes into, uh, they got to worry about that runoff in Georgia with Herschel Walker and uh, Raphael Warnock. That's going to be a good one, and I'll give you a prediction about that one in a minute. So right now, what it looks like the makeup of the House, the Republicans are going to take the House, maybe by a seat or two. As long as, nothing, they nothing could, as long as they could over, you know, one seat is fucking enough. That's it. You yeah. get the votes. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need. That's all I want. I, I'm not, I, don't care. I didn't need a 30, 30 seat majority. I didn't need that. I just wanted Biden to get put in his place. Yeah, for and sure. And now the same thing with the Senate. That's why that runoff. Uh, let's get to that Senate runoff. That's going to be a good one down in Georgia with uh, Warnock and Walker. I mean, Herschel so Walker, interested- I mean, he's the man. You know, number 34, you see him in that Giants uniform, return of those punts, man. Interesting stat that I have here is, uh, so uh, it's interesting that you were talking about Arizona, Georgia. So uh, Pennsylvania for the Senate race, that was the most expensive uh the most expensive for the election. I'm talking about in terms of uh, the the amount of money that was spent uh, on these campaigns. So Pennsylvania spent over three hundred million dollars, over three hundred million dollars, right? Georgia uh, is in second place with spending for the Senate, and that's a little bit over two hundred and fifty million. Then you have Arizona, that is in third place, which spent. You know, over two hundred million dollars between two hundred million and two hundred and fifty. Then you have Ohio, which was fourth place. But it's interesting where you see the tight races are and where the money is. Where the money goes is where you're getting all the you know these voter counts. 
we have to go and see what the details are. It's it. it I don't know, man. I, and that's a part of the reason why there's a Republican civil war right now. And that's why a lot of people are at uh, McConnell's neck, McCarthy's neck, and uh, just the the RNC est uh, establishment uh, Republicans because they underfunded a lot of uh, MAGA candidates, Donald Trump endorsed candidates. They didn't they didn't fund a lot of them, and a lot and funding. You know, like like you see how money the more money you get in there, the more commercials you can you know run, the more people you go around you know have them knocking on doors and shit. So funding's a big part, especially in contentious elections like this. But you see the establishment Republicans, the rhinos, and this is where we're going to get to that civil war. The rhinos, the establishment guys. It's I don't even know this, DeSantis. I would, uh, like, you know, that DeSantis is kind of in between. The people like to consider him a rhino. He's not MAGA, but I believe he's on the MAGA agenda, you know, you see him busting the migrants up to Martha's Vineyard in New York City. You see him uh, with all the LGBTQ whatever stuff in school. He removed the books that you can't even show on TV. Those books are pretty explicit. I think I sh I sent you the the film of, of those uh, the school council uh, the school board meeting in uh, Dearborn, Michigan, where all the Muslims came out and they're like, "We don't want this shit in there." They were going off on uh, the liberals, and he's like. The liberals like this is our country, and you gotta accept how things are. And the Muslims weren't having it. Same thing happened in Jersey City too, a few years ago when they were trying to put the LGBTQ agenda into schools. The Muslims down in Jer Journal Square, they were not having it. They were out there, they were protesting. You not know, just Journal Square, Square, also downtown, the, the uh, downtown right next to the uh, where the mayor, uh, the what would you call that? The, I wouldn't call it the Capitol building, but. Wherever the mayor is, uh, uh, the business section, uh, the business district, uh, downtown, uh, downtown, the the, 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 yeah, the, well, yeah, exactly. So, uh, right next to that, they have a huge temple and they have a lot of events there, like a lot of movements because they, they, it's just right down the block. They just got to go right there and they could do a little protest with everybody that just, you know, that prays there. So it's interesting. And I love, know. and I love the, uh, you know the woke, uh, the woke lefties, and they're telling these Muslims to their face, "We're doing this for you, for equality." Like, bro, you don't know who the fuck you're talking to. These are some of the most ultra conservative people in the fuck world. Fuck that. If not you know what it's really about? It goes back to nine eleven. It goes to back to nine eleven and how everybody became polarized against Muslims. And everybody was hating on them, and nobody was put, sticking their neck out for them. Nobody. And everybody was hating on them, and they had to eat a whole bunch of shit. So now that they're like, oh, you guys want to play your identity politics? All right. Where were you when we needed your help? We're a minority here. We're trying to start businesses. What happened? And they're People doing very well. Exactly. Look at the uh, the Asian community. You don't even have to go too too far back. What about the the what was it the intermission camps or something like that for the Asians the after Pearl yeah, Harbor? The camps. Those were the Japanese. It was. Well, well, I think it's anybody general, but, was Asian. Yeah, it was. Anybody. Yeah, they just bulked everybody in there because they were like, "Oh, you don't look like us. We're just gonna do this." What is that? That's when government decides your rights are. These, boom, we're going to take them away just because we think that this group, this goes back to group identity policy, this group is in, is is responsible for X, for be the result of X. Like, are you serious? So, yeah, my bad. I just wanted to, you know, the, the no, no, Muslim no, I mean, population like and that, everything. Identity you know, politics there. Is, it's part of politics now. It's, it's horrible. And it, the Democrats brought that in. They brought it in in the Obama era. I remember when he started, you know, giving little glimpses of it, glimpses. And then with uh, Trump coming in, they just went straight left. And the identity politics is based in Marxism, based in Marxism. That's what it is, because Marx, it was about you want the proletariat, you wanted them to rise up, you know, the working class. Like, oh, you, you know, you have no rights at work, blah, 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 blah. But what he found out is like most workers, they don't want to overthrow the government. They just want basic they want, you know, better living standards, higher wages, you know, more rights. They want they don't want to work 80 hours a week, you know? Yeah. And that's why it never took off in Europe because we the especially cuz the parliamentary system and everything and and at that time in Europe when he was trying to push it, people were you know, starting to get more personal freedoms. 
and they had more negotiating powers with their governors because you saw with who was it a uh, was it King uh, William of uh, Persia? He started to become very liberal and everything. He give more rights to workers. So Marxism never really took off, and a lot of Marxists even said the best way to go in of uh, the American black folks, they are the prime example because they have been oppressed, and that the race based grievance thing is going to be the way to go because you can't change your race you know you can keep on going with the grievances you can always find a new grievance as we see like we're in a pretty like equal equal you know we're in an equal society you know there's not one place i could go that a black man can't or one thing i can't do that he can't you know we could all do the same things go to the same places we might not have the but same the narrative the narrative no, that's, that's being told now yeah yeah, that you can't do that. You have uh, black people who, but I can't even jog. I can't even jog without wearing the reflector vest. Or how about this during the midterm elections? They don't even know how to vote. Yeah. Oh, they can't. Black folk don't know how to go get a vo uh, voter ID, or they they can't get IDs. That's racist. they can't get IDs. They can't. They don't know how to take the bus. Apparently, there, yeah. there was one. Yeah, they were talking about all. Oh, you know, this bus stop doesn't take you to the to the polls. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, yeah, they're like, come on now. Like, it's bullshit. It's totally bullshit. And especially with the ballots, like, if somebody doesn't fill it out right, they shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be counted. They're like, oh, this is uh, against minorities. So you're saying minorities don't know how to spell their own name and address? And I don't even want mail in ballots, but I want them to be checked. And if it's missing a date, it should be thrown away. Missing Dude, a signature. You know, you know what's crazy, man, right now that I was just thinking? Talking about the, the the black vote and and then you earlier brought up about abortion being one of the main driving forces for the Gen Z voting. Kanye West was has been interviewed and he's been documented saying right now before getting like completely canceled that the the new uh, I guess you you could say that the new massacre the new what whatever he said I don't want to use the word that he said abortion. but the new massacre is abortion. And what did they do before the midterm elections? They deplatformed them. They don't want the black voter knowing that. They don't want the black voter thinking that. And he was, and he started talking about numbers about how the number of annual, uh, I mean, abortions. We could call it murder, but abortions that happen a year. So I wonder what type of an and impact. It's predominantly it the black community, and that's the thing that nobody likes to talk about. Is predominantly the black community, and. It, and it seems like that's a bad thing to say. That's a bad thing. It's like, that is a bad thing. I don't think, I mean, think about it. I mean, the black population has been pretty stagnant. And part of it's because they put Planned Parenthoods on every fucking, in every city with a black, big black minority population. They put Planned Parenthood. It's all over. I mean, that I would like to look into to see. Because that you Margaret Singer. Margaret Singer, she was the founder of Planned Parenthood. She was at a about uh racist white supremacist uh bill gates father was also involved with planned parenthood that's why bill gates is into eugenics and it's all true you call you can look it up it's yes margaret singer bill gates's father they were all involved with planned parenthood yeah send me the links dude because i because this and i also want to look up the ge the geographical locations of of where these places are because you can easily show that like you could get Google Maps and literally do oh, yeah. pin drops. You know what I'm do right it. now? How about you, you do this? I mean? Go plant, type in over there by you. Planned Parenthood near me. I'll do the same. I'll tell you how many's in my area. I mean, I'm in Texas, man. I, there's not, you know, in the oh, part of Texas true. that I'm at, there's not, there's not really. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Know. I want to look at this. The the U.S. as a whole. Oh, look at this. Within my, I just did mine within my location. I have three, and there it's in Elizabeth. Predominantly black and Hispanic community, Newark in the uh, Iron oh, Bound. Yeah. No, there's two in Newark. Predominantly black and Spanish, East Orange predominantly black. Yeah, let's for go. sure. Let's go. Let's go over Hudson County. Can I get some Hudson County? Or it's not good. Why is it giving me Manhattan? Of course, Manhattan. You got a bunch in the Bronx. You got a couple like was it a couple in the Bronx? So yeah, and it's in minority communities, bro. I just did that. Just a quick search, yeah, but I want to do something more thorough, you know what I mean? But for so far, for the quick research, yeah, it, it appears to be that way. But yeah, it's interesting that that's what, you know... You could that say could... it's for... Uh, 
it's it's a nice way to do eugenics because you're like oh you know you like i mean stacy abrams the candidate for georgia the georgia governorship she says uh poor people pretty much um poor people are poor because they can't get abortions she pretty much said that in like an interview she kind of like she had to walk it back it was like oh poor people should get abortions like that's their mindset. Why should the poor shouldn't have so much kids? They're just eating up resources. I got they have to pay more taxes. You know, that's how they feel. They don't want us to eat more. But let, let's get back into the midterm and the, the freaking. Uh, but yeah, all right. Let's get back into the midterms so, and identity politics. That's not going to work in Georgia with Warnock and uh, Walker because they're both black. So. Uh, that's going to be interesting when I see Walker taking it because. Neither one of them got 50% of the vote. And the thing that um, kind of made that happen is the Libertarian Party down in Georgia is pretty uh, prominent. I believe they, they pulled about maybe 3 to 4% of the vote in Georgia. And just normally, like Libertarians, they hate government. And like a lot of them don't like Republicans or Democrats. So let's just say they sit home. Walker did have the lead in the vote count by, I think, a couple, a thousand or so. That means Walker's going to win if they have the same amount of turnout, which I predict, especially in a runoff in December. I mean, it's going to be pretty hot down in Georgia. They're pretty good with getting the vote out. You know, they have a whole, all these big election machines, especially with Stacey Abrams. She had a couple, um, what was it, stop the steal, get out the vote, some bullshit down there. So there's a big Democratic machine in Georgia that's going to make sure they get their votes out. But if turnout stays the same, I see Walker taking it. But the Libertarians might come in, and they might just put Walker over the top where he might get an extra percentage point. So my prediction is if Laxalt stays ahead of uh, Mas uh, Cortez Mastro, Republicans are going to get 51 seats in the House, 51-49. And that would be awesome because that could stymie uh, Biden from pushing through his uh, judicial appointees, all his like cabinet appointees, uh, people who are uh, going to get promoted to, let's say, uh, some bullshit department of, you know, some agriculture. You could stop that. You could stop all his appointees, all his judges. So that affects uh, the Dude, makeup. What we need to it. focus on is the economy. Everything else is second. Right now, the economy needs to be the number one focus right now. Getting a I balanced doing budget. A good, I'm, I'm going to give Biden credit, credit where credit's due. I mean, that did you see? Well, first, let's go with the student loan thing. Did you saw that just uh, a federal judge just uh, slapped it down, said it was unconstitutional. Right after the midterms, bro, how many people, how many people voted because like, oh, Biden's going to give me $20,000 off my student loans, $10,000. And you had all these TikTokers promoting that. All these TikTokers were pro promoting like uh, student debt forgiveness. Joe Biden's like, I, and he lied a few times saying that he already signed it into, into law. He lied. And then uh, New York Times had a fact check them. I think CNN fact checked them like, that's false, that's false, that's false. But the pe thing about it, these TikTokers, you think they're getting fact checked? No, they're not getting fact checked. They're saying like, oh, Biden's going to get off student debt relief. He did it. These kids are stupid. They all they and hear that's is like, where oh, the misinformation money. comes in. That's where the misinformation yeah. comes in. And TikTok previously in the last election, they they didn't allow any type of uh, you know government or political uh, you know advertising. Let's just say uh, on their platform because uh, that at that time that's when we had the whole Cambridge Analytica uh, Facebook fiasco, which was just the last election. Um, and it, it, it's interesting because while you're talking about all these issues, abortion, uh, you know, the cancellation of student loan debt, I wonder how much of this is attributed to social media and data collection and understanding how to manipulate and sway voters based off of their interests. Right. Because you're talking about you also hit it, uh, the Marxist ideology, the more socialist ideology. Those are data points that they could extract. Right. They could then make it about abortion. They know how to target. They know how to manipulate how, what buttons to push. They know on TikTok it's all about, 
you know, the gender politics. I want the purple hair, the blue hair. I, you know, I identify as X, you know, YZ. I'm an elephant now. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. And it's a Chinese spy app. And, you know, China, yeah. they like they, they don't allow half as much shit uh, like on our TikTok that on their TikTok, you can't even see half the shit. Of course not. But then it's interesting also because it, since it is a Chinese based uh, company, what is it that they want us to sway to? They want people to sway blue. Why? It seems... It destroys the country. It, but not only... It weakens us, but then it also makes us more like them. Because what happens when things are blue is... Because who was... A, a, let's go back to uh, the, the pandemic. All the blue states were the most restrictive. They were the ones that were doing the lockdowns and everything. It reflected more of what China was doing. In a way, but uh, like with uh, the Chinese influence, I believe uh, they don't want what uh, they want us weak. Yes, that they, they like you, you got that right with how they want us to be, you know, at each other's throat. You know, they want just this country in a shit show, which it's it's, it's doing. But right now they're pushing these gender thing like, you know, transgender this. They want everybody to be kinder, more feminine. Right. But over in China, they're running the, these manly freaking ads for the military like they're they're they want more macho ness more bravado the bravado they they don't want like these soft fucks they're they're breeding their guys over there especially in their military to be hard as fucking nails and right now in the military we got freaking trans freaking uh captains admirals i think it was a navy trans uh admiral that recently just tried to sell some um uh nuclear secrets to the russians happen yeah. or you can just get Yep, yep, about a month ago, not even a month, maybe two. And it got swept under the rug because that was the first person in the Navy, her and her husband, which I mean, or spouse or wife. I don't know. It's kind of fucked up. It was like one of the first trans whatever officers in the military got caught selling uh, codes or secrets to the Russians or trying to. Damn, dude, that's so, crazy. Yeah. So they want, I mean, trans, I mean, I have not well you want to do what you want to do but I don't want you in my military if you're if you're on all those drugs for hormonal whatever that means your your mental is not right I don't want that that doesn't breed a strong military yeah well, before the suicide military, rate is also really high too so it's kind of like do you what? need more mentally ill people with guns or around yeah. guns yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Clinton yeah. did it fine. It was don't ask, don't tell. That's what it was when I was in. Don't ask, don't tell. That's it. You don't got to go around with a purse. You don't got to wear a skirt. You know. So like, who do you think China would be more afraid of as, as in the Republican Party as like the leader? Trump or DeSantis? Because Trump, we already know. Trump. Because, I mean, Trump put sanctions on uh, on trade. Uh, not sanctions. Tar he, put, he hit them with tariffs. Uh, he started the whole thing with I want to bring yeah, manufacturing. I think the tariffs are still in place. Still feeling it. Yeah, man. Alibaba stock was up heavy duty. And whew, right now it's under $100 a share. I mean, big companies over there that were trading high during uh, pre-Donald Trump, but they're still down. And they're going on still down even further. Uh, Trump. That's one thing Trump did right uh, is us versus he China. Lot, he did a lot right. But that, I'm going to highlight that one point cause since we're on China and TikTok and all that stuff. That's one thing that he really hit on the head and that stayed. And it became a, and it became a bipartisan thing that everybody yes. can agree on. Is yes. it, China is the enemy. And regardless of what party I member you are, what side. Yeah, I mean, Russia, that, China's really the, 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 the number one uh, that we have to worry about in terms of economies, right? Yep, I mean they predicted that were gonna they were gonna jump uh, leapfrog us and uh, having the number one economy. What was it in twenty twenty five or something like that? And now they pushed it back to I think like twenty thirty. I mean, Which is why I'm saying with the economy, we have insane. to be careful. We can't be printing more money. I don't want to hear them hitting hitting the print button anymore. 
No, no, no. And stop sending money over to Ukraine. We got to be physically responsible responsible right now. We, we can't fuck it. We got to tighten the belt buckle. I mean, inflation went down this past month, thank God. I think it's, what, 7.6 or something like that? Yeah, it went down from so, 8.2 or 8.3 down to 7.7. 7. Oh, 7? Yeah, 7.7. So, I mean, it's moving in the right way. I mean, you got the Fed. They're going to increase uh, interest rates again. I think okay. they're going to do 50 basis points, which is, you know, like half a percentage. So half we'll see percent, about yeah. that. So we're moving in the right direction. There's going to be layoffs. There's going to be job losses. It's going to be, I mean, they're predicting a recession 23, 24. They said a lot of people, especially on like the PBD podcast are saying about 24, 25, maybe it's when things are going to be better. That's to tell some people to hold off on buying houses and, you know, the big. A hundred percent. Right now, cash, if you have cash, keep it. Don't don't even invest in, in anything yet. If they're gonna put up the the the, the interest rates a half a, a percentage, that means mm-hmm. that the stock market is gonna reflect that downwards, right? No, actually, because uh, they were predicting, I think it was gonna be a percentage point if the inflation number was still rising. But uh, now that it's because um, Powell said if it was inflation was rising, they were gonna have to try to meet it, and you know they were gonna go up by a percentage point. So now that it went down. I think now they're predicting that he's going to do the half a percentage point. But it's so now you know, interest like, rates are going up, right? If interest rates go, go up, no matter, matter what, what, the stock market's going to go down a little bit. That's just so. What I'm saying is, is the discounts are going to keep coming. People, houses are going to be discounted. Stocks. I mean, Facebook right now is below a hundred bucks. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, they're slashing prices left and right. It looks like Black Friday out there if you're looking for investments, you know what I mean? But still, it'll it'll still go down further. Just wait. Hold on to the cash. Stack up. Get ready. Blood is going to be in the water. Right now is the time to work harder. Do that extra shift if you got to. Fuck, just work hard. Work hard. Work Make your sure ass off right, right now. Time comes, bro. Yeah, man. Get another job. Maybe. Do what you can. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm telling you, blood is going to be in the water. This is going to be the time in, in people's history. history. They're going to look back uh, five years from now, and they're going to be like, wow, I should have invested then. Had I invested then, I would have made X, Y, Z now. You know what I mean? Because the money's in circulation. We're not just, you know, we're paying for what the, all that printing and everything. But once everything gets regulated with these interest rates going up, and everything starts bouncing back. Oh boy. Talk about a golden era. It's going to be golden for the right people, the smart people. Yep. How's the time? Like, now's the time. Like, chill out. That's why I was like, like, I have a little money I made uh, from the crypto. I still have a little money that I have to the side that I've been trying. Like, you know, I was like, should I throw some in, you know, all into crypto or stocks? I do, you know, I was like, eh. I didn't put it all. I just threw a few few hundred bucks in the crypto. I, was like, I just want something in there now. Because I, I when shit was crashing, I, I pulled out everything. I was like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm yeah, holding yeah. off. I'm holding off. Like right now I think like you said, it's gonna it's gonna you know, everything's gonna plummet a little bit. I will say after the holidays. Because that's when you're gonna see a lot of layoffs, especially in the retail sectors, which is gonna affect the uh, you know the stock market. You can I mean, see right now that. you have Meta laying off eleven thousand employees. You have Twitter, over 3,000 employees last week. Uh, Microsoft is is letting off uh, off a whole bunch of people. I mean, you have companies on companies on companies that are just announcing that they're cutting thousands of jobs. Thousands. So things are going to go down. This is eerily similar. I mean, I wasn't an adult at the time of the dot-com bubble. But I've been, uh, you know, listening to a few uh, podcasts and they're like, you know, this is eerily similar to that dot com bubble where like it was just a crazy, like, you know, exploded, crazy growth. Then all of a sudden it had a. Just like a restructuring period where, you know, a lot of people lost a lot of money and then you had these few. Few that were, you know, the front runners, you had like your. Uh, was it? Yahoo. I remember Yahoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That, you know? So the whole thing is, is uh, people learn from that time. And before, if you just said you made a website, you could have gotten millions of dollars, right? Because you there weren't that many programmers. Like- 
Exactly. Everybody had cash. Everybody wanted to be in the tech industry. Now the companies that are out here, think, thankfully, are you know they actually have something to sell. They have a product and they actually are making money. At least if you're smart. So that's the whole thing. With publicly traded companies, look at their balance sheet. Look at how they're using their money. You know, you don't want to get into uh, into a company that's just nothing but debt and doesn't turn a profit, right? So that we learned from. But the thing that is new in this frontier in this day and age is the crypto sector. That's like, come you have FTX that's about to file bankruptcy. They were even caught using about 10 billion or 10 million. I think it's 10 billion of the user's money uh, in crypto for their own investments. So now things are going crazy right now in terms of that sector. So anybody that was into crypto and I was I was warning people the whole time, crypto is not a safe investment. Not a safe Oh no, no, no. It's a way to make a quick buck. That's all I'm saying. It's gambling. It's gambling. it's gambling. Yeah. That's all it is. It was gambling. Um, and Do I believe even... in it? No, I don't like it because I believe that's where they're going to go with, uh, you know, the one world digital currency. And uh, and I don't want that. But uh, did I, you know, I want to make money on it? Fuck yeah. Because I've seen these people who do like, you know, a few hundred bucks and then now they're like millionaires, you know? The flip. Yeah, man. All right. So. Uh... All right. So the economy is a driving factor. So a lot of things are. Going uh, Joe Biden when Joe Biden's way, like with the uh, mass layoffs coming, uh, student loan getting shot down, that that would have screwed Joe Biden if it happened before the election. So that was a big part of it. So now with the Republican Civil War, what's going on? You have Trump at the Santis. He's calling the Santis uh, the sanctimonious because he didn't technically rule out that he would not run for president. So now the media is playing up this big Republican Civil War, which there are, which there is. And there's been one because you have the rhinos like the McConnells, the Cheneys, the Romneys. And then you have the MAGA crowd like the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Boberts, Bo Lauren Boebert, who almost lost her race in Colorado. I think she's up by maybe a few hundred votes. That's going to go to court, too. That the MAGA crowd. Republicans don't like them. And the rhinos would shoot themselves in the foot if it means not having these lowly freaking America first populists in Congress. They don't want people like me in there. They don't want people like me who hate the, the establishment, all the muck and fucking grime, all that disgustingness, that swamp in fucking Congress. I hate it. All the bureaucracy, all the freaking, all the bullshit, all the big mo money, the dark money. We don't like it because we've been sold down the river with these big corporations. These corporations have been screwing us ever since like that in installation of NAFTA. We fucking closed up our freaking factories. We shipped them all over to China. We shipped some down to Mexico, some over to uh, fucking Thailand, you name it. So this country is hurting. And you know who got rich? It was the rhinos, the establishment party, the uniparty, the neocons and the neolibs. That's who's doing it because they're one. There's a uniparty. Those people at the top, the Pelosi's, the McConnell's, they're all one. So right now. You have all the big media, like Fox, Republican Civil War, all the big pundits. Trump should not run. Da, 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 da. They want this unity. They want to break off this little, this movement called MAGA. They don't, they don't want this. They don't want a populist movement. They don't want anybody who's going to threaten the status quo. They don't want that. So right now they're going to play up this civil war and Trump's playing into their hands with his fucking personality. You know, like he needs to shut up and just shut, sit the fuck down. So how's it going to go? We're going to see.